As we continue in this first unit of Visual 3D Basics, we are now going to show you how to open files. Now, just like pretty much any other program out there, there is this very handy open button. So if I just click this button, you see it prompts me to select the files that I want to load. Now, you will find them attached right below this video. We are going to select Cluster Gate 1 and Cluster Gate 2. These are two files that we already prepared for you so that in the next chapter, we can build a biomechanical model that will be used on them. But you see, if we just click open, they end up right down here under our motion files and they are currently both set to active. Just like this, these files aren't going to give us a lot of information and let me show you why. Both files being active, if I now click on the Signals and Events tab, you can see that the data is in here, but since we're viewing all files, this 3D viewer is actually somewhat useless because we are not viewing multiple files simultaneously. If I come up here and click on the drop down next to All Files, you can see I can select either to view cluster gate one or cluster gate two or view the global workspace. We'll talk about that in the future or all files. I'm going to choose to look at cluster gate one. Now we actually have something in our 3D viewer. So if I click on play, you see it appears to be moving in slow motion. That's simply because in the bottom right hand corner of Visual 3D, see right down here, it is trying to play every frame, it's trying to give you a real representation of what is happening. Depending on the speed of your computer and frame rate, several things, this could be running slow as you see right here. If I click on play at capture rate, it might skip a few frames as this data was collected as a much higher frequency, but it's going to show it at the speed that it actually happened at. Now, of course, we can tell that this is a person walking. We can see those markers. We have a general idea, but that's because we are intuitively connecting the dots in our heads, quite literally, as these are really just dots there is no model associated with them. So here on the right hand side, you see we have a list of data that we can look at. Now this data includes the target data. Now targets are the term in Visual 3D for the individual markers that we are viewing here. So for example, if we were to look at the LTH1 marker, that's gonna be one of the left thigh markers. If I click it, you see it pops up this little window and it shows what this data looks like, where we have the X, Y, Z, and residual data. Of course, this isn't all that helpful in this little window. We can also view it as data values, which in this window is even less useful. And we can also click on signal processing history. Now, since we have done no processing at all, there is nothing in here. But we could view this graph in a slightly more useful way. So if I press shift, that's just the button on your keyboard and click on LTH1, you see now we have the data in the right pane. In this right pane, we can view graphs and compare them. So right now we are just looking at that LTH1 marker. And actually, let's go ahead and pause it so you can see exactly what we're talking about. LTH1 is going to be this marker right here. And in the right pane, what we're viewing is the X data right here at the top. And then we have the Y data right here in the middle of the pane. And below that, we have the Z data. Now you say, okay, so I can view this data. That's not actually all that exciting or interesting. 
In Visual 3D, you will find often you're trying to figure out what is going on and you want to compare data. If you go through our various tutorials in Visual 3D principles and Visual 3D tools, you continue on in this course, you go on to the Visual 3D expert course, you'll find that we often pull up this data and want to compare to see what's going on to understand better what uh, is happening as we look at the data. So let's say we're looking at the LTH1 data, and for whatever reason, we want to compare it to the RTH1 data. Pressing shift again and clicking RTH1, see now that data has been added to the same graph, where here we have the LTH1 just hovering over it, and down here we have the RTH1. So we can look at these and compare them in a very quick and interactive way. Additionally, you probably noticed as I click play, there's that vertical line moving across my data that is showing the frame that I'm at in this moment. So just to make sure it's clear, it's this frame that you see here across all of our graphs. That line is the exact frame that we are looking at. Now, if for whatever reason you are not viewing that line, if you click on view, you can select view graph animation frame line. Also, if this is the first time you open Visual 3D, you probably have the C motion banner. So you may or may not want that on there. It's just under view and select or deselect view C motion visual 3D banner. These graphs are also something you could zoom into. Let's say you are particularly interested in this uh, spot right here. I click on it so you see the box is viewable around the Z data and just clicking and dragging to the left zooms in and now I'm scrolling through it to the right and I can see this zoomed in view of where I'm at. And you can always zoom in more, scroll more, or let's say you're kind of annoyed, you want to go back out. All you have to do is reset all and you can reset all the graphs or just reset the selected graph so that you're back to the default view of the entirety of the data, both in the X and the Y. If you want to remove all the graphs, again, just right click and select remove all graphs. So now we've talked a little bit about viewing these individual markers for this data, but there's not a lot we can do with that data. We were talking about these two thigh markers, one on the left and one on the right. Of course, we have many more than that. But what do those markers tell us? Not a whole lot. And that is because they don't even necessarily have anatomical significance. What we want to do, and this is part of the reason to use Visual 3D, is to build a biomechanical model. To do that, we need to load a static or calibration file. So if we go back to workspace, in here you see we have no models or calibration files loaded. What we are going to do is under model, so that's just from that top menu, you see one of the only options available to you since nothing is loaded is to create add static calibration file. And what we're going to do is select hybrid model from C3D file. The same folder that we just loaded from, by default, is going to be the one Visual 3D is prompting us to load from. And in fact, you see there is a file called cluster static. This is a file that was collected before we performed those motion files that we already loaded in Visual 3D. So if I click open, Visual 3D automatically prompts me to associate this static calibration file with motion trials. 
Of course, we only have two trials loaded. We only have one calibration file, which I've already told you corresponds to these two motion files. So we're actually going to select both of them. Now, you can either select the two checkboxes, or if you just click and drag, see now both are highlighted. If I check one of the checkboxes, both get checked. With two files, obviously, that is unnecessary uh, steps, but if you have a lot of motion files, this could save you some time if you're doing it by hand. Now, in the fourth unit of Visual 3D Basics, we will show you how to automate all of this. All of these steps that we're going through are to show you what's going on and so that you understand how to do it all, but we're also going to show you how to automate every step. Now, if I click OK, now I have a static calibration file ready to build a biomechanical model. And if I go back here to workspace, you'll see we now have this cluster static, which is directly associated with the cluster gate one and cluster gate two files. So continue on to the next chapter in which we are going to build that biomechanical model on cluster static to then be applied to the cluster gate one and cluster gate two motion files.